right, in problem number 46 of section 1.1.1, or 1.2.1, we're given a physics problem where, again, we have the position of a particle uh, given by some function, except rather than just uh, position along a single axis, we're given position in two-dimensional space. Now, the way that this is often done is in physics is by coordinate functions. It'd be one function describing its x position and one function describing its y position, I mean the uh, horizontal posi the position along the horizontal axis and the position along the vertical axis. Now, in order to decide the rate of change at any given point, we need to look at both the rate of change in the horizontal direction and the rate of change in the vertical direction. So that's exactly what we're given here. We're given that the function is um, x of t comma y of t. So we have the horizontal component here and the vertical component here where x of t is equal to 1 over t and y of t is equal to 1 over t squared. Now we want to find the instantaneous rate of change. Start with x of t. So instantaneous rate of change of x of t is going to be Again, the limit is h goes to 0 of x of t plus h, so 1 over t plus h, minus 1 over t, all over h. So if we simplify this a little bit, limit is h goes to 0, 1 over h, times now, so we just factor out the 1 over h in the denominator, and um, simplify the numerator, we end up with t minus the quantity t plus h over t times t plus h. And this equals the limit as h goes to 0 of 1 over h. Now we see here that we have t minus t, so that cancels out, and we're left with just a minus h in the numerator over t times t plus h. Now fortunately the troublesome spot, the h in the denominator, which is preventing us from just sticking in h equals 0, cancels out. So we now have limit as h goes to 0 of negative 1 over t times t plus h. Well now this is perfectly well defined if we stick in h equals 0. So we're going to do just that and we have 1 negative 1 over t squared as the and this is going to be in units of distance over time over time. And that gives us the instantaneous rate of change at time t in the x direction. So this says how fast is the particle moving along the x-axis. The sign is telling us is it moving to the right or is it moving to the left. So now we're going to do the exact same thing for the, y, for the function giving the y position. So we're going to have the limit as h goes to 0 of now the change in y, so 1 over t plus h quantity squared minus 1 over t squared all over h. Again, we're going to use the same trick that we used uh, in the first part. So we'll have the limit as h goes to 0. We factor out 1 over h and simplify the numerator. So we have t squared minus uh, the quantity t plus h squared um, all, all over t squared times t plus h quantity squared. All right, so now we want to multiply out the numerator. And we get 1 over h times t squared minus, well now we have minus t squared. And this is minus the quantity t squared plus 2th plus h squared all over t squared 
times t plus h quantity squared. All right, so we see here we again get some pretty nice cancellation. The t here cancels out, or the t squared rather, cancels out with the t squared there. And every other term has an h in it, so we can go ahead and cancel out the h's. So this leaves us with the limit as h goes to 0 of, we're left with 2t in the numerator, minus 2t plus h over t squared times t plus h quantity squared. And now we're free to substitute in 0 for h. So we have negative 2t in the numerator over t squared times, well, we uh, stick in h equals 0 here, so we're just left with t squared times t squared, or t to the fourth, which this simplifies now to minus 2 over t to the third.